Thank you. Um, so my name is Hua Young, um, and I want to talk to you about this project that I did, um, that I just finished about a month uh, ago. It's still kind of going on at the same time, but uh, I'll, I'll introduce you to what I'm doing. And also, I want to warn you, this is an interactive presentation, so I will be handing out a couple of things, and I'd like you to interact with me. Um, so uh, Numbers That Matter was a uh, creative exchange project. And the creative exchange was a, is a um, AHRC funded project between three universities to work with um, SMEs or real world people. So this is a kind of crossing over between academics and um, people who do stuff in the real world. So um, the three universities um, were, are the uh, Lancaster University, Newcastle, and the RCA. And they have a whole list of partners from SMEs and cultural organizations. Uh, there were six strands that the academics wanted to uh, look into, uh, including public service and innovation and democracy, making the digital physical performance, rethinking working life, stories, and heritage. Um, you can go to the website to see all the six clusters. And I was working on the making the digital physical cluster. So the um, organizations that happened to be a part of this one were Lancaster University and Dundee and uh, Future Everything, which is based in Manchester. And I was working as Future Everything for this project. So um, <clears throat> when we thought about digital and physical, the, the process of getting uh, academics and uh, professionals to work together involves um, a play date. So this was about two years ago where we all met in, um, at Media City to discuss how to make the digital physical. And um, we thought about uh, data for the digital bit and wearables as a physical. Now, I know this is kind of the year of the physical, but when we were doing this uh, two years ago, like kind of come up with ideas, it wasn't that wi widespread. So at the moment, like the pebble had just come out. So it was kind of an interesting field to look into. Um, so those are the two areas that we were looking at. And to make it a little bit more interesting, especially because we were working with academics who could provide a lot of the research and the grunt work for um, writing papers and stuff like this. Uh, we looked at um, open data specifically to try to um, get a better idea of how to spread the idea of open data and, and how it impacts our lives. And other than looking at uh, the quantified self movement, which the uh, current plethora of wearables were kind of geared towards, like tracking your sleeping patterns or like your stool, stool samples or um, <laughs> how many steps you've taken, how many calories you've burned. It was all very introspective. So we're trying to find a way to use wearable technologies to have a better understanding of not just yourself, but your surroundings and your communities. So we're trying to look at quantified others. And because we're working with academics, uh, well-being was kind of thrown into it as well. And um, the idea of well-being is also, this is kind of a buzzword as well, but um, I don't think it's really gone into the mainstream. I know there's a lot of stuff around health monitoring and things like, uh, um, like how to have a better quality of life. So it, it is kind of like getting into the mainstream as well. So we wanted to tr combine all these three sub t subjects. And the way we came up with this was to find uh, numbers or data that matters to everyday people. So that's how the, uh, the title came up from. So we first started off by looking at uh, what kind of wearable technologies out there already. So these are. Three, uh, these are you know, some four uh, wearable applications that are already out there. And 
we really wanted to get away from just the Fitbit and, and the smartwatches that were out there. So the first one here, this is a patented, uh, it's not on, out in the market yet, but this is Sony's Smart to Pay. <laughs> and you can go, it's listed, the, their patent, so you can go and see what they do. But um, I don't know why they didn't, why, I feel like a lot of tech is geared towards men. Uh, they're probably more interested in it. So they did the, the toupee first. Anyway, there's a lot of things you can do with this. Uh, it's not actually out there, but I thought one of the most uh, interesting add-ons to it was a laser. So you can do your presentations by tilting your head. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then uh, that, the one on the far right, that's called the Nekomimi. And this is already out there. It's been out for a couple of years. It's a kind of, uh, <laughs> you pair them with other people and they kind of guess your mood as well. So if you find anyone who you can, who's also wearing ears, they would respond to you. Uh, I think it's important, and a kind of really strong general bias here, but uh, in societies where, um, you might not have, you have social barriers to interacting with strangers. This kind of um, <laughs> thing that, that allows you to have an easy way in to talking to people, I think um, they're more developed there. Um, and the funny thing is that um, the, the models for these kind of things, even though the user bases are, are men, you find that women would model these products to make it, I don't know. Um, and then this one I really like, it's called the North Paw. And this is trying to augment another sense that you don't really realize. So I know we have the basic five senses, but this one is trying to enhance your sense of uh, location. So what it does is, it's an ankle bracelet that has six pins around it, and it'll tell you which way north is. So as you're going this way, you'd feel, if, if that's north, you'll feel the pin here. If you go here, if you turn this way, then um, the sensor would hit you on, the, on, on like the top of your foot. So this is a, a, an example of a passive wearable where you don't have to um, actively check how many calories you, you've burned at the time. And through people who've been wearing this, like after two weeks, even though they're not wearing it, they'll find that they can find north by like kind of training yourself. Um, and then that is the arrow wristband, which just came out recently. So this is a kind of quantified self thing, but it's enhanced more than the sleeping patterns um, and how many steps you've taken by also analyzing um, your, your veins and tells you very crudely what kind of food you're breaking down in your stomach. So, this was trying to solve this problem of passively recording what you've eaten. So uh, like when you've eaten starch, your, the blood veins would flush differently. So that's the way they were trying to tracking that. So this is all the stuff that's out there already. And they're trying to solve some of the problems of uh, telepresence or monitoring or like enhancing other senses. And uh, in terms of other kind of social issue or civic issues that we were trying to look at, here are some, uh, these are my two favorite projects. Uh, these are kind of location based as well. So um, I don't know if you've heard of ghost bikes, but um, they're markers around the city where a cyclist has had a fatal accident. So they're, they're kind of like not screaming at you at all the time, but this is where something's happened. And uh, the Pansy Project is also um, when someone's been a victim of um, homophobic abuse, they would plant a pansy to mark that this is where something like this has happened. And there's maps of where you can see this and kind of stuff. So like, the idea was that you would have something that's wearable that would alert you when you're out in your neighborhood about something that's happened. 
Um, so those are the kind of things that are out there that we're trying to look into. Um, <clears throat> so what could we do, what could we look at and create that would be beneficial to just normal or ordinary people who aren't uh, early adopters or techies or geeks who would go out and find these things on their own initiative. And that's kind of hard to do. Like, how would you prescribe a product to somebody without knowing what they do or what they want? So the solution to this, obviously, is to crowdsource it. I have, a, I have some issues about hackathons in general, but thought my, if we could put as many fail-safes in to make sure that we got a pretty good um, input from just normal, ordinary people, it, it, we could try to minimize the, uh, uh, the cons of the outputs of a hackathon. Um, so we did some research first. And because we always thought that it would be nice to find out what ordinary people want, how they relate to data, and how that can affect their life issues. So um, we, we tried to find groups of people who, wouldn't, who would have low awareness to data, closed or open. Uh, and like the kind of catalyst was, for this was the fact that the um, huge corporations have access to a lot of the data that you generate that you, yourself without knowing that you generate. And this could be anything really simple to your postcode, where you live, uh, your age, uh, your gender, your lifestyle habits that the NHS has, the government has, and a lot of these things will affect what sort of insurance you can get, what sort of pensions, um, and a lot, of, a lot of people don't know about this. So to get this kind of hidden knowledge of, of communities, like how can we get this, so we decided to um, choose three groups I uh, thought would have a lot of this hidden knowledge about their neighborhood and their communities on a kind of hyper local scale. And uh, because we were working with academics and um, kind of cultural organizations who might be out of touch with the common people, um, we thought the best people who know this are neighborhood watches, uh, barbershops or hair salons, and uh, taxi drivers. So how can, um, so we need to, we targeted these three groups to, to find out. We're gonna in, uh, re, uh, interrogate them, interview them, and see what kind of uh, problems they have and try to solve them through technology. Um, there was quite a debate about what communities to target. So we did come up with this. We thought these are the people who would who, who act as um, repositories of confessions of like the, just the general temperature and mood of a, of a community. There was a close fourth. We, we thought nuns would probably know as well. But uh, we stuck with those three. So um, because these are people who don't have a lot of um, access to technology or issues around privacy or data, we couldn't just go and find a taxi driver and say, what wearable would you want that would solve your problems? We had to go about uh, in uh, kind of roundabout ways. So we took lots of cab rides all over Manchester and just asked them simple questions like, have you noticed when you're driving what's changed in your neighborhood, what sort of gadgets do you use, um, the same for hairdressers and things like that. And then through those, we kind of pulled out bits that we thought could be used to create a criteria for our hackathon. Um, and then try to create personas and storyboards around this. So one of the best ways to kind of start this kind of um, uh, conversation was to have tools. So we did some, we had some uh, very simple things. We started off with just postcards. And 
This was also to kind of find out about general well-being as well. And there's five key stages, like if you go to the NHS, they, to try to find out the well-being of somebody, they will ask you very simple questions that you know you can answer really easily, like how many red cars have you seen today? So that kind of questions your awareness to your environment. So I'm just going to pass these out. Um, so uh, through that, you can kind of see how much uh, involvement they have in their communities, like how many neighbors' names do you know, or um, how many times, how many green spaces do you know in your neighborhood, or things like this. So we're trying to find base ways to, kind of, to f extrapolate key questions that we could use later on to um, set the agenda for the hackathon. Um, so what did we find? <laughs> we found that all three, well, first, the first thing we found out that it's really hard to talk to um, people you don't know <laughs> about these kind of issues. And we had to do several, several taxi rides. We also, most of the people um, got our hair done I'd, I had my nails painted to try to find out these kind of things. Um, they all have their own sort of health risks depending on occupation, which was a uh, kind of re revelation towards the academics. Which you found that like hairdressers have bad backs because they're standing all the time. Taxi drivers as well, they're very in a uh, static environment. And the neighborhood watches um, had an issue with the fact that only mostly it's the elderly who are involved in this kind of community groups, and they have issues with uh, walking around, like reporting potholes, um, getting more younger people involved in the community in the neighborhood. Um, also, like there wasn't a huge awareness of data. We couldn't even talk about open data. We had to talk more about. This is the kind of stuff that's being generated. Did, did you know, like, if you go on Facebook, they own all of this stuff? And you know, so it, it was a lot of just talking and building conversations and making sure that, um, that, that it was a two-way thing between all of the groups that we talked to. And also, uh, you can't really talk about technology in a way. Because even though they use smartphones, they don't really think of that as, as tech. Um, and even if the, the, some of the cab, the cab drivers um, think it's a badge of honor not to use the sap nav uh, and would kind of dismiss the people who do use sat navs because it means you're not really good at your job. Um, so those were the, so we had um, like a whole sheet of things that we found out from talking to these various neighborhoods. And then we ran a hackathon. And um, I'm just going to, show you a short film of what we did. Um, this will explain the... Um This was for the making of digital physical strand. We thought it would be more interesting to have a civic awareness of wearable technology. We wanted to talk to people who act as in these kind of communication nodes within our community. Taxi drivers, because we kind of figured people might have a bit of a bladder as they're taking a ride somewhere. Hairdressers, because they've got this regular contact. And then also the neighborhood watchers. To an extent, they're kind of already using technology to kind of monitor the well-being of the community. So this was, I think, a, a slightly more radical way of doing it, in which we actually are getting our hair cut and having a conversation or taking, taking a, a journey in a taxi. So we were engaging with them at a very grassroots level. And it culminated in this hackathon that we're doing today. And they say that it's not just numbers, it's alive. 
get a lot of information about other people. So that's my, what I'm being observing the most and what makes me all excited. So this is the people that make sense of this number and how they do it. Our project, we're looking at developing a wearable that will encourage people to forage more. Uh, so particularly in cities, we want some of that's going to encourage people to go foraging and be curious about the area around them. We just took people outside uh, and set up a foraging trail, also came up with some design ideas for why the device might sit on us. My favourite is probably um, some of the attached to your stomach and vibrates when there's free food to be foraged nearby. So I think anything that helps you engage with the environment you're in and be more curious about it, it's got to be good for well-being. So we have an idea that uh, maybe the data should be manifested as a physical growth. So we're taking a computer panel uh, and attaching plastic to it so that it fills with air and then we can control that with an Arduino to turn it on and off to drive data into this shape that can change. I'm a researcher in another part of the Creative Exchange, so Numbers of Matter sort of is, is part of this wider program called the Creative Exchange, which is investigating um, digital public space. My concept is to develop heated gloves for women. It'll be touch screen compatible as well, but today's video is basically to work out how to make them hot as well as clever, clever yeah. and have like a little motherboard to capture some data by finding out the temperature of the body so that uh, you can heat the gloves using the Arduino device. So it's actually going to uh, work out the temperature of the surroundings and then it's going to regulate the temperature of the gloves and hopefully you'll always have warm hands and warm hands are happy hands. <laughs> I sort of like the relaxed atmosphere about this when it's like talks and uh, a bit workshops and some hacking sort of stuff. So we were looking out the window and we saw people sort of walking and running past the, that on the, on the streets and we sort of thinking about things like the pavement. It's like a really, really bad thing, like a really bad photo. You might not bother reporting it to the council. So we sort of thinking about how we record data so that people can almost passively record these problems without having to make a great deal of effort and then it can be sort of reported to the council so that and it can be, it can be fixed. who are in the hackathon are going to be coming out hopefully with wearable devices that we could then see how that could connect to people's well-being. Looking at something that was a little bit more responsive to communities that wasn't just accessible to a certain demographic of tech geeks. So that's why the numbers that matter title came from. So it's just trying to bring an awareness of open data and reading information. I think uh, we have to go away from the phone and the computer because most of these people, uh, it is a digital divider. We very much see technology as being an enabler of society to improve the way people live. What's different about this was it brought together new and original thinking because wearable technologies are probably going to be quite big in the next five or six years. It's interesting because uh, obviously coming from an academic uh, background, uh, obviously the book was more on the research, and it was amazing to see that actually some of the ideas that we came up were influenced by actual research data. So in many ways the hardest thing about the judging was how did we uh, make sure that we recognised the collaborative nature of this process. because I had no other option than to come on this and to see what is there. And there's just so much more than what people think that hackathon is about. So and it's about meeting people, sharing ideas, creating something. For two of us, from the zero knowledge <laughs> of electronics and programming to be shared, to create something that's really working, mm. I think it's just fantastic. We'll be very happy wearing the gloves. Because <laughs> we'll be warm and toasty. <laughs>so that was in March and um, it was really nice it, we had about five or six teams to, to present uh, at the end for the award ceremony and um, 
more than half of the teams that took part, even though it wasn't themed as an academic, say, the World Hackathon, uh, took on the ideas that came from the various communities to try to solve these problems. And um, the, uh, I'll just give you a rundown of the, the three that were shown. So uh, path patterns was a way to do a passive uh, wearables. And it was looking at um, the granny trolleys. So we're going to put an accelerometer on it. And as you go, you would try to see which ways that people take. And if you get an aggregate of like street usage, maybe you'd find out why you don't use that street. And if you go, it's because there's a big pothole. That's where all the dogs go and dump their feces. Um, and the idea that you could keep aggregation data to use and, and also monitor it so that um, it, you bring an awareness of, of tracking to, to, to people who, who aren't aware of this kind of technology was, was a nice way um, to kind of solve those problems of like daily street usage. The um, data tumors for a better society really took on the health issues that various professions had. So, um, the, you, so the taxi cab riders would have an inflatable uh, like neck brace. And as they became more stressed, you'd see the tumor getting bigger and bigger. So, so maybe you could <laughs> chat with your cabbie about what's going on. Um, and, and also, you could kind of monitor the stress levels that the, the cabbies would have as they're roaming around different areas. So again, a kind of passive way to collect a lot of data. That can be anonymized, which was quite important for, for us. And happy hands was um, the heated gloves. And um, we were looking at, I know she's the Michelle who won. That's the one that went to field trail, and it's still going on at the moment, uh, was to look at not just making fashionable wearables, which was a, a, another thing with tech. It's, like, it, it's more towards geeks. So Maybe it's not as nice looking, so she's trying to do that. But also, people with uh, low blood circulation, uh, especially with Raynaud's disease, that was uh, an issue that we're looking at for that one. Um, so the, those were the outcomes of the hackathon. And there, there were two outcomes. One was the, the actual product that's gone into field trial. And the other one was a um, booklet, which I'm also going to hand out. to um, have uh, as a tool to, for other people to go and run these kind of uh, sessions with your community. Now, I have to stress, this is a, a beta booklet. So there's some typos I know. Oh, some more. Oh, I'll, I'll take it over. Oh. Okay. So one of the uh, issues that we had was how do you how do you talk about data and wearables without like, going over people's heads um, if you're not interested in it or, or don't know about it? And the, the best, so one of the most uh, important things we found was that people don't really realize what kind of data you generate, what kind of data people have on you, what corporations have on you. So the, um, so we created a, uh, exercise to kind of start talking about data. So we created the, the data dice game. Uh, and you can see it on, um, I believe it's on page, page 15. So it's over there. Um, so this is kind of just a conversation starter. And uh, we kind of looked at types of data, uh, who you give this data to, how it's stored, and, and how specific it is to identifying yourself. So um, <laughs> I'm going to just roll a dice so we, we see the first one. All right, so I rolled a six for the first one. So we're looking at what kind of data? So we're looking at lifestyle data. And then um, this, is kind of, this is the kind of stuff that that talks about uh, your hobbies, uh, your, your profession, what kind of things you like to do outside. 
And then if we look at, um, let's say, your doctor, that's I rolled a one. So what they would ask you, how many units of alcohol do you drink? Are you a smoker? What do you eat? You know, these are the kind of things that, if you get down into specifics, it's a lot easier to talk about when you're doing um, like these workshops with community groups or even internal, like within your company or, you know. Uh, and, and these are the kind of things, like just playing these kind of games would be an easier way to start thinking about data. And then you can go on to um, how to solve those issues. So we thought it was a, like, a, like a very two-step process of finding out what's around you and then trying to solve those issues. And, and always trying to focus on the people. So this, um, I'd like to uh, develop this uh, activity book a bit more. So if you look through and tell me your thoughts, I'd be very happy to hear them. Um, if you need more, I can give some more. So um, that was, uh, <laughs> this is my very short presentation. So that's kind of how we did Numbers That Matter. And um, I think it's quite interesting to put focus on people instead of technology uh, and instead of just trying to tell people about data and like, did you know Facebook and did you know Google um, and, and like turn it back so that you get, you, you, you talk about the people first and then you try to find ways to solve so social or civic issues. And um, that's, <laughs> any questions? That's my talk, thank you.